Hello and welcome to Samsung Studio. Following on from my previous footage on how to do a rolling breakfall, today we're going to show you how to do a little bit more advanced breakfalls. Okay, following on from my last footage how to do a basic rolling breakfall, I'll do the first one just to remind you what it looks like and then we'll lead on to the more exciting, more complicated advanced uh, breakfalls. So we start off with normal rolling breakfall. And then the first of the more complicated breakfalls is for confidence, agility, and more of an explosiveness. Now this time, pay attention that the hand which goes onto the mat will not touch the mat. So it is a very fast, what we call half spring spring, and then do a nice impact breakfall. So pay attention to the hand. Now that requires no hand on the mat at all. So it's more explosive and it's uh, more painful as well. Uh, next one I want to do for your confidence is the basic control where you grab the sleeves. Now all this builds your confidence up in judo so it doesn't matter how you're thrown, where you land, that you are capable of doing a break full. Hands, no hands, no feet, doesn't matter that you are able to control the break full. So this is a good exercise where we grab the lapel and the object is not to let go of the lapel. So you have the confidence to roll in a circular action, finishing on your shoulder without letting go of your lapel. The stepping actions are the same, so keep hold, don't let go, keep your chin tucked in, step forward, roll, and left side, roll. Now if you notice there was an impact on the feet, for this one we have no hands to do a break for. So I'll do that one more time, and if you notice the feet, they're turning sideways, and when they come down, they will hit the floor. The feet actually take the impact of the roll, therefore you don't get hurt. So you are doing a breakthrough with your feet. So pay attention to the feet. One more time from here. And then the other side. You can hear the impact of the feet hitting the ground and that's learning, teaching you how to use your feet. The other break we like to do is what we call coordination work. It's more martial art based. Most of Kimmy's are with your legs straight. When we said we do a rolling break fall, your feet lie in a straight line. Now what we're going to do from here, we're going to cross our feet this way and this way. Feet across, over. But not together. We don't want to bang the knees together or the shins together. It's got to be separate. Now this is done by old samurai who wanted to avoid uh, any impact by sword or dagger or, was, or if he was in trouble during combat. And the idea is you can dive away from your opponent Turn and face them. Where the first one, your feet is straight, you would roll, get up, and you can see I've got my back to my opponent, and I'll keep walking. So the variation is understanding the variety of breakthroughs which help you control. Okay, so I'll just show you again from here. Roll. So if, if you learn that coordination, that will help you understand there are different varieties of breakfalls. Uh, I'm going to show another breakfall, which is uh, very exciting. It's one of my favorite ones. Not many people can do it. Um, and it requires great agility and skill. And uh, it's done where the hand that goes onto the mat is the same hand that does the breakfall. And it's quite complex. What you need to do when you put your hand on the mat is to twist the opposite direction. But I'll show you what it looks like first of all. It's a nice technique. It does teach you a lot of coordination. It's a tricky one and needs a little bit of practice. Uh, as I said, the golden rule for this one 
If you put your right hand down, turn to your left. If you put your left hand down, turn to your right. That way you'll be able to create a beautiful half twist, as we call it. Uh, this break for again, as I said, is a little bit complex. And where I've been talking about distance, covering distance, for this particular break for, you don't have to go distance. You actually do everything the opposite of what I've told you. Instead of going and reaching distance, so there's a big gap, this time you actually put your hand quite close to your foot. So your hand should come straight down onto the mat. You don't want to stretch your hand out because when you try to twist, you will dislocate your shoulder. So this is a dangerous one. The safe way is to just drop your hand straight down. Imagine you're going to lift yourself off the floor. Up. This is the action. Up. So you can't do that if you come forward because there'll be too much pressure on the shoulder. So, golden rule. Hand straight down. Lift yourself up and then twist in the opposite direction and just do your normal kimi. By this time, you should be quite competent in your break force, so you should be able to get away with this, okay? So this is what it should look like, up and break through. Again, down, nice break. One more time from here, up, you should break. A lot of people don't give uh, break force enough attention and this is why we create a lot of injury. You should practice your break force as a golden rule, as a warm up. You're never too high grade to avoid doing break force. Exercise and break force come hand in hand and it's a huge tool which protects you throughout your whole judo career. Only takes a small mistake, a small anticipation, small reflex for you to hurt your fingers, your shoulders, your neck. Break force are important for you to learn not to stick your neck out and not to stick your shoulders out. So I can't stress enough how important breakthroughs are and people don't give them enough attention. So always, always use breakthroughs. It's a great warm up tool and it's also a great warm down tool as well. Always remind everybody that breakthroughs are very skillful, are effective and are protective as well for you. Thank you very much for watching.